Hello everyone, good evening and uh, welcome to the session. So this course is Office 365 Administration and Troubleshooting. My name is uh, Sheikh Dawood, a small introduction and then we can uh, get into our course. So I'm a Microsoft certified uh, trainer. I have uh, close to 14 years of uh, experience in the industry, working at uh, different administration levels. So I have worked on the Office 365 from the time it was like a pilot uh, uh, launch. So I worked as an uh, on-premises administrator as well. So the transition from the on-premises administrator to the Office 365 or the M365 is what uh, I'll be teaching so that I'll be able to uh, help you understand the comparison, the problems of what is what are like what are the challenges that an organization is facing when it comes to the on-premises and how Office 365 is proposing a solution for it. So we'll be able to compare it and uh, understand the how things are better when it goes to cloud is what uh, we'll be able to understand. And I uh, have done some migrations as well. So we'll be talking about few migrations when it comes to uh, Active Directory or Exchange and the SharePoint migrations we'll be able to discuss as and when we talk about the topics. So uh, just an introduction, just a theoretical introduction on what is Office 365 and why companies are preferring Office 365. We are going to talk about it. So today is definitely the first class and uh, we will be talking more technical as well. So because many people are, are joined, have, like many people joined in for the first time. So I thought I will just take you through this ideology because some, like many of you might know, but some of you might not know. So to give a better idea for everyone. So I thought I will talk about this. So what is Office 365? It is a software as a service. So everything is like uh, real life based only. It's not a not a rocket science as such. So very, very simple ideology or a comparison. Let's do it uh, onto a real life. So the difference between owning a scooter and renting a scooter is what is the difference between the on-premises and the cloud. So if you want to own a scooter or own a bike or own a car, the problem is like first you have to invest, you have to, you have to pay money and then you have to pay for the insurance, you have to pay for the road tax and then you are responsible for the regular service and uh, year on year you have to change the tires and if something goes wrong if something breaks down you have to you have to repair it and you are sole responsible you are sole accountable for that particular bike or the scooter because you are the owner and you need a parking space as well and if rain comes in you have to protect it so whatever happens you are accountable that is the scenario of a on premises which was which was like the scenario say like six years seven years before many companies or most of the companies were on premises they were having the data center they were having their servers they were having their administrators who are managing it and uh, year on year the year on year softwares will get outdated and they have to go for a new software year on year hardware gets outdated they have to go for a new hardware so in all and and if something breaks down they need administrators to fix it and uh, if the administrators are unable to fix it they have to go for the the premier support from Microsoft. So end of day, Microsoft is what solving the solution. So how things are changing when it comes to cloud, not only cloud with Microsoft, so cloud with any vendor for that matter, let's say it could be Microsoft or it could be Amazon, it could be GCP for any, any cloud. The solution is this. The solution is that what is Microsoft is saying is you concentrate on your core business and we will take care of your infrastructure. That is the line that they're saying. So let's say, for example, let's say, let's say Ola. Ola's primary business is car rentals. Now they're into the two-wheeler market. So their core business is that. So they don't have to worry about their IT. If something breaks down in IT, the whole, the whole, uh, say like the top level people, they don't have to they don't have to concentrate on the IT to see like what is going wrong. They can continue to concentrate on their business. Rest everything is taken care of by the Microsoft. Same thing what happens in a rental scooter. You just enjoy the ride. You don't have to worry about the 
You don't have to worry about the insurance. You don't have to worry about the road tax. You don't have to worry about the parking space. You don't have to worry. You just, you just enjoy the ride. You just enjoy the service and you pay rent for it. That's the idea of a rental scooter, right? Exactly the same thing is happening on the cloud. So Microsoft is saying like, I have the softwares for you. You just host it. You just take the software and use it and you pay the rent for me is the idea of a cloud computing and the same goes with infrastructure as a service means like you will be able to design your own infrastructure whereas software as a service is like you don't have an option to build anything everything is predefined you will be able to use the software you can simply sell like you can simply say like how many users you want it and you just pay as per the user so so that is the concept of office 365 why many why many organizations are jumping in and going for office 365 that's the same reason like we don't like the companies do <clears throat> excuse me like the companies do not want to take the problem on their head say for example let's say a company is started in 2024 and you imagine that in 20 or else you take you take a scenario that company started in 2010 okay so what will happen they will have the latest softwares like uh, the, the latest Windows server, they will have it and say the latest Office Office product, they will have it, latest Exchange server, latest SharePoint server, latest uh, Teams or, uh, or uh, whatever the collaboration software was there at that time, they will use it. What will happen? Three years down the lane, they have to upgrade. Six years down the lane, they have to upgrade the hardware. So they they should have a large space. They should have a large cooling solution. So it it and what is it they have to do month on month? They have to update the system. They have to patch it. Like many many organizations, they have a problem in patching. What happens is like the patching window is is very small, and say like after patching, the machines does not come up. So during patching, there is a P1. So like that, a lot of cases, a lot of problems that many companies are facing. So that's why they thought like, okay, why not? Let's go to Office 365. We don't want to have that headache because Microsoft is saying that they are going to, they're going to provide a 99.9 percentage of uptime. Okay. I'll just show you. So one minute. So I'll just show you there is a Wikipedia site which talks about what is the meaning of high availability, which means if someone says that, hey, I'm going to manage your service 99.9 percentage, .9%, that doesn't mean it's 100 percentage. There is going to be a scheduled downtime is what I'm trying to tell you. See this. So Microsoft is saying like they are going to manage the, they are going to provide services for 99.9 .9 percentage of uptime. So that doesn't mean like it's 100% for a whole year, you expect 8.7 hours of downtime for a quarter, you're going to expect 2.19 hours, same goes on. Okay, so this is the idea. So this page helps you a lot for, for understanding the agreement because if you if you know a bit of Azure, there are something called there's something called as available set and available zones. So in which like these these higher amount of redundancy has been provided over there. Okay, that is the logic. So the whole and sole idea is like many, many organizations, they don't want to manage their infrastructure. They want to take the service and they want to use it so that my, so that it is in the, it is in the Microsoft hands, which is the very, very, ex, like very, the hundred percent loyal or, uh, or say like the brand matters a lot over here. So they want to give it to Microsoft so that they, the services will be in the safe hands. That's what many organizations are doing. Okay, that is the idea altogether. So, you know, I know that you're all muted. You'll not be able to unmute yourself because it's just a first class. And, uh, but I'll be happy to address your uh, questions over the chat. So please drop your questions. As in when I go through the chat, I'll reply to you. So, but but wait for it. We will, I, I'll give you a QA and a session so that like you'll be able to post your questions. So now, Let's go through it and uh, drop your questions. Let's see how if I'll be able to answer or not. Okay, so this is the idea. Like, what is Office 365 and why companies are preferring to go to Office 365? I hope you're right. You're getting an idea. So if you are here in this meeting, probably I I will be able to understand the expectation is that either you are looking to scale up yourself, 
Okay, looking, you know, you might be looking to scale up yourself from the on premises to Office 365, or you're looking to, uh, you know, move from one one domain to another domain, or you are from completely a non IT domain, you're moving into IT domain. That could be the reason, or else the reason could be like your organization is already, you know, you're already your organizations are already on Office 365, and you are asked to complete this course for a better managing the infrastructure. So that could be the reason you're all here. So I'm sure all these questions will be answered. All these questions has a different answers and I'll be able to answer all the questions. You'll be able to get a better idea on whether you should be able to taking this course or, 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 you know, it, or if there is any other course, which is, which is there, which, which I can advise you. Okay. So Ankush. So the question is prerequisite. There are no prerequisite for this for this course because AZ900, AZ104, both are completely different. Both are infrastructure as a service. This is software as a service. So this course code starts with MS. So MS900 and so on is the, you know, those are the course codes. So, so search for MS900. And in fact, like that is not a prerequisite. So you can learn many things right from here and you'll be able to take it to the next level. That is the idea. Okay, cool. So I'm going to tell you what, what is that we are going to cover over here in this one. Okay. So someone has logged. So someone has a question, the difference between office 365 and M365. In fact, both are same. The older name was called as office 365. What Microsoft did was like they segregated and they made the office suit as office 365 and rest of all the services, they named it as M365. That's it. So otherwise, like there is no great changes. So that is what you should be understanding. So yes, M365, you can call it because I'm from the old school. So I still call it as an Office 365. That's the reason. Okay. So the components of Office 365, what is that we are going to cover in this, in this course and how we are going to take it through is what I'm going to give you a glimpses of it. So we are going to talk about the Azure Active Directory, which is now called as Entra. Entra ID is what we are going to talk about. And we will, so within this uh, Entra, within this Azure Active Directory, we will be talking about the identity management, how you'll be able to manage your accounts and how you'll be able to manage your users, how you'll be able to manage your guest users. So, and then we'll be able to talk about the Entra ID connect and we'll be talking about how the synchronization happens what is a what is a hybrid identity and how it works so the you know like this we'll be able to talk about more on to the azure active directory then exchange online we'll be talking about how you'll be able to manage the mailboxes how you'll be able to set up rules what are public folder what are accepted domain what are remote domain so a lot of terminologies and also we'll be talking more when it comes to, uh, you know, exchange online, because like many, many organizations, they are going for Office 365 for one main reason that exchange is, is having a good amount of space. For example, so when we go for, when, when an organization is going for Office 365, they get a 100 GB of they get a hundred GB of space for their mailboxes. Okay. So, and also like, uh, and also like say, uh, exchange is a tier one service, right? Mails are tier one service. So if mails are down, your business is down. So many companies, they don't want to take a risk. They don't want to take a risk on their email. So they are, they are moved on to Office 365 for that reason. Okay. That's the idea. And we'll talk more about exchange. So we will be able to, you know, uh, talk about the migrations as well when it comes to exchange. Then we'll talk about the SharePoint. So the document repository and also the internal website creation we'll be talking about. So, okay. Probably has answered this question. So Kunal, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about SharePoint administration and MS Intune as well, as you, as you could see on the slide. Yes, we'll be talking about both, both administrations uh, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to the uh, syllabus. So Rajinder, MS102, you will get an idea about MS102 when you go through this one. Why? Because 
MS102 talks completely about the identity management. Okay. And uh, say enterprise mobility and security. Okay. So that is the idea. But uh, here you'll be able to get more of practical. But when it goes to, you know, but but when it comes to the, the theory, the theoretical one, you have to prepare for the certification. Why? Because learning is different. Preparing for certification is different. So both are completely different. So here you'll be able to learn on how you can crack an interview and how you can administer on a real time that that you'll be able to understand. But certification, you have to put up extra effort to clear it. That's what I would say. So answering Sam's question, does this cover exchange on premises too? answer is no, because setting up exchange on premises is a different scenario. But but I'll be able to give you an idea on how things work on premises and how things work on the cloud. I'll be able to give you a comparison. Okay. I'll be able to give you a good comparison on how things work on on premises versus the cloud that, that, uh, that explanation I'll be able to give it to you. Okay. So yeah, I was uh, talking about the SharePoint online and, uh, so Dinesh, yes, as you could see, Migration, we will talk about three three migrations. We will talk about one is Azure Active Directory, second exchange, and third is SharePoint. These three migrations we will talk about when it comes to migration. Okay, so yeah, I was talking about uh, SharePoint. So I gave you a hint on what is it we are gonna talk about on the SharePoint. So under the SharePoint, uh, yeah, probably it's give you one, tell, tell you one more time. So internal website creation, we'll talk about the team site, we'll talk about the uh, communication site, we'll talk about the sharing, we'll talk about the migration, we'll talk about the SPMT tool and how you'll be able to synchronize with your uh, local machine. We'll talk about the, the manage of sites, uh, automatic uh, and the manual size management we'll talk about. And then comes the security and the complaints. So security and complaints is a uh, different or say like an individual course uh, uh, altogether, MS 500. Okay. And then uh, yes. So under the security and compliance, we will talk about uh, the e-discovery, uh, you know, and then we will talk about the DLP data loss prevention, the compliance score, the secure score, and also we will talk about uh, the submissions, how you'll be able to submit an email, submit an attachment to Microsoft that we will discuss and uh, the retention policies and also the communication compliance policy, lots and lots of policy and plus the ATP, advanced threat protection, EOP, exchange online protection. So all these terminologies and the reason behind the terminologies on how to manage, you'll be able to get an idea. So the whole and sole idea is like after you, after you complete this one, you will be able to attend an interview very, very confidently and you'll be able to manage this particular domain in a better way. And why I tell this because like uh, we, I, I don't want you to prepare on one technology. So how you should be preparing is like you, you prepare, you, you say that, Hey, I know many technologies like a, like a letter T like the alphabet T is there, right? So which means like you should know many technologies on the top line, the horizontal line and one vertical line is like you should know one technology in depth. So that you can choose over here after you start with this course, you decide whichever you like it, that technology you take it and you go in depth into that particular technology. So what is it we will cover in this course is like every technology that you see on the screen over here, we will be able to cover, we will be able to cover around 50 to 60 percentage of it. So how you scale any one technology or all the technology to 100% is your interest is what I would say. Okay. And then we will talk about the teams online over here. So in which like we'll talk about how you'll be able to manage the team for users, the different policies available, the, the calling policy, messaging policy, and the live event policy like that. So many policies are there. We'll be able to see like how these policies work when it comes to teams. Then we'll talk about the MS office, like how you'll be able to uh, deploy MS office to users, how users will be able to install it all by themselves. So that we will, we'll see when it comes to MS office and then Intune. Intune is very important and the Intune is definitely getting a boom. Now say like uh, MAM, mobile application management and mobile device management is what we are going to cover when it comes to Intune. So this is the course content that we are going to cover in this, uh, in this total one and uh, fee structure. 
Amit will be the right person to talk about the fee structure. So please get in touch with him. So Afzal, please get in touch with uh, Amit to get the answers on the fee structure. Okay, so... So Kunal, question to you is like, the question you're asking is like, so there are purely Office 365 administrators are definitely there. There are requirements in organizations asking for asking for Office 365 administrators. Yes, definitely it is there. So though the companies are going for Office 365, there needs to be a person who are going to manage the tenant. So it's not that it's going to be completely, it's not that you're going to, no, it's, things are going to be completely automated or something are going to completely go to Microsoft, hence no. That's not going to happen. Definitely companies, the tenants, the companies need administrators to manage. So if you are scaled up to that level, you'll be able to appear. You'll be able to get a job on that. Okay. So, uh, so Veera, yes, we will be able to talk about L2 and L3 level. Uh, when it comes to, when it comes to Azure Active Directory, we'll be able to, you know, do a lot of management through, through Office 365 as well. So Srinivas, yes, we will be talking about PowerShell as well with respect to Office 365. Yes, but only, okay, but but it's only Office 365 related to PowerShell only. But you you not you you cannot expect, you know, you cannot expect um, an in-depth knowledge when it comes to PowerShell. But yes, whatever is required, I'll be able to give you. You'll be able to do it. Okay, so that is that we will definitely do it. Okay, so Vera, if you need only Azure Active Directory, I don't think we have a course like that. So, so it is it is a complete one. The complete package will be discussed. So, someone has logged in as iPhone, right? So, when you say you don't have knowledge on on premises, Exchange is also fine. That's fine because Exchange is very easy because it is very close to life. So, you'll be able to understand things in a better way. So, you don't have to worry about it. Even though you, even though you don't have knowledge on the on-premises, it's totally fine is what I would say. So, Uday training timing is going to be weekends, 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. weekends is what, uh, is what we will do it. Okay. So approximately six to seven weekends or even eight weekends also it will go. So, so that is the idea. So prerequisite of MS 700 is what I would say. 721 is, 721 is what? 721 is troubleshooting, right? So I don't think we'll talk more about troubleshooting on teams, but yeah, 700, it will, it will cover a bit. Okay. So VDA infrastructure, today we know we don't cover VDA infrastructure, but yes, Intune is included. What is it? Mamshi, Intune is included. So if you want to do MS 700, 721, please check with Amit. So Dinesh, it's a paid session. So check with Amit. He will, he will let you know. He will let you know about the fee structure. So Piyush, as in when we talk, as in when we go through the course, I'll be able to help you with the link or material to learn and do certification, don't worry about that. Okay, fine. So let's move on. So let's get started with our uh, day one, just a small short class, I would like to have it today. So, so what is the idea over here is that this is the administration page that I have it in front of you. Okay, how you will be able to land, land onto this page is like, so, okay, I'll just answer one question. So, Abzal, after this course, yes, you'll be able to perform L2 level and a bit of L3 level as well. Okay, and uh, Piyush, what I mentioned was like, you join the course and then Amit will help you like how you can appear for certification and, and uh, do it. Okay. So Samrin, check with Amit. He will, he will, he will let you know about the fee structure and everything. Okay. So coming back over here. So this page 
that you see over here on the screen is that saying this is the administrator page okay which means this page is admin.microsoft.com okay so so how we are able to get to this page i'll just uh, tell you so there are different plans available like the way like when you go by a, a car there are different variants available right so what is it i do i say office 365 e3 trial account okay is what uh, i'm typing so what is it i do i take this because if i if i go with uh, the same screen it will again take me to the one so what do you see over here is that you have a page in which it is saying that what are all the options that you have when you go for this license is what it is saying so it says that when you go for this e3 what does e stands for e stands for the enterprise so in case if you if you ask like hey what are the different licenses that we have from microsoft if that is the question that you have so the answer is right over here when you go with this full comparison so when you go with this full comparison pdf over here this gives you the option on what are all the what are all the licenses available and how you will be able to and how you'll be able to use that license and what are the features available you'll be able to see it for example if you could see over here see this so you have licenses like for m365 for office 365 and say microsoft teams like there are different licenses available so this pdf is available if you search for office 365 trial on google you'll be able to land on to this particular page i'll do one thing i'll just put it on the chat yeah so if you go over here at the right bottom corner you'll be able to have something called as a full comparison pdf okay so that you'll be able to get it from there you'll be able to land on to this particular page so this gives you an idea of the features that are available okay in which how much of mailbox you get it say you get a 100 gb mailbox or you get a 50 gb mailbox and for shared mailbox how much you get it does so the complete comparison is provided over here and as you might be knowing that cloud options and cloud cloud options are now meant to change uh, very dynamically by microsoft so it is it is very important that you understand the live or what is currently like the features currently available for you on the system okay so the way you can see it is like from from here so if you say like hey i want to try it for free yes you can try it for free over here for a 30 days of time so the only check is that you have to provide the credit card details for that so earlier it was not like that earlier it was in a different way that without credit card also microsoft was giving a trial account for usage but things changed so many so many free accounts uh, started flowing so microsoft reduced it microsoft made this as a as a mandatory one by providing the credit card so what is the challenge is that yes you have to provide the credit card and you can try it for free for a 30 days of time so there is a difference between Azure and M365. So this M365 service is a prepaid service, which means you first pay for it, you purchase the license, and then you will be billed. Whereas the Azure is, or Azure is an infrastructure as a service. What is infrastructure as a service? Which means like you, you can use whatever service that you want to use it. Later, you will be charged. That is the idea. That is called as a 
post paid concept when it comes to the Azure, which is called as a pay as you go model. Whereas this one is called as a prepaid model. You have to purchase a license. After that, you have to apply the license to your user. Okay. So before purchasing something, we should know the features of that particular product. Is that product really suitable for my organization? Will that be useful or, or is that is that going to help me is what you need to understand. Why? Because like, why? Because like, there are organizations which are extremely comfortable and which are extremely set already, which are extremely set already. So those companies, if they are thinking, you should think in a way like how they work. Okay. So for example, let's say that there is a company. I'll just open. Okay. So let's say like there is a company which is having around say like a, a 30k users. Okay. I'll just turn this phone over here. So let's say like there is an organization which is having around 30k users. So, so this organization is a well settled organization. So you need to convince, you don't have to convince it, but you try to think from Microsoft perspective, why would this company wants to, you know, go for office 365 because this company is a well settled organization. Okay, so if it's a well settled organization and if they have to go for the license, they have to go for, let's say like out of 30,000, they have to go for 30,000 licenses, right? So as you could see on the page over here, how much is one license? License cost $20 per user per month. So if they have to go for 30,000 licenses, which means you think in this way that 30K into $20, this is for a month into 12 for a year. Okay. So you, you have to think in a way like these many companies are going for office 365 after spending this much amount of money. So these uh, higher management people like CTO, CEO, they all think, you know, they all think in a longer, you know, years down the lane. So they will think that for the next 10 years, okay, if they are thinking that for the next 10 years, I have a plan of spending around, let's say 10 million. Okay. $10 million is the, is the idea is the budget that they are having. So what will happen is like, yes, the costing will be higher during the initial days when it comes to Office 365, for example, let's say like, let's do a small comparison when it comes to on-premises and when it comes to Office 365. Okay, not a, not an exact count as such, but, a, but, but just a small a rough comparison is what I want to, I'm going to do it over here. Let's say that 10 years down the lane, on the first year, what will happen on the on-premises side? Okay, on the on-premises side, what will happen? They will have, they will not have any expenses. Okay, for example, let's say that, uh, because this is a settled environment. Okay, so after three years, on third year, they might have, they might have to upgrade all the softwares. Then they have to change all the hardware, which is all gone. Let's say like they are spending around $5 million. Okay. And after third year, again, after third year, they might be spending around $4 million. Okay. Again, after four years, they are spending around another $4 million for upgrading the infrastructure, like the problems that they have, you know, the, the salary that they have paid for the administrators like that, they are, they are, uh, they have, they've done a calculation like this. When it comes to Office 365, okay, let's say like when it comes to Office 365, beginning, probably first year, they might have spent around because for the initial, 
okay for the initial investment they might have spent around around 3 million dollar okay but what will happen is that year on year there will be a lot of savings why because like if you think about the shared mailboxes it is free of cost and you don't have to invest on your hardware your data center space is getting your data center space rent is getting is becoming a saving so what will happen year on year it will it will keep on reducing and what will happen is like at the end of 10 years down the lane they might have spent around 7 million dollars only so that is the comparison. So like for here, if you see this, how much say eight plus five, 13 million, here it is 7 million. So they are having a savings of $6 million, 10 years down the lane is what they calculate. Okay, so, and and also like they don't have this tension when it comes to the Office 365 suit because like things are handed over to the expert. Things are handed over to Microsoft. They are taking care of your infrastructure. So you don't have to worry about, you can concentrate on your goals. So that is the way they think. So that's what I'm trying to show you over here is like per license, per license is going to cost you around $20 per user per month is what it is saying over here. Okay. So if you take this license, which is named as Office 365 without the team's license, you will be able to install it. You will be able to install it onto 15 devices. So probably this is one interview question, say like a person who knows the features will be able to answer it. So when it all started, when it all started, it was only five devices per users. Now it is 15 devices per user is what? is what you'll be able to use your license, okay? And as you could see that it provides message encryption, it provides the RMS rights management, it provides the DLP for emails and files. So message encryption, you know that because like now all the messages are flying over the internet. So, and on the internet, there are lots and lots of uh, hackers and so many people who are trying to steal your data. So when the data is flowing over the internet, so Microsoft ensures that every message is encrypted and the safe and secure way of transportation is happening over here. Okay. So, so Khaja Mahidin, for this one, yes, you have to purchase the Teams license separately, but you have different one which has the teams over here. Okay, as you could see that when you go with M365, E5, you go for it, you get the teams automatically. That is what it is saying. Okay, so yes, but like things are having different options over here. Okay, and what is RMS, Rights Management Server? So on the on-premises, have you seen an option like do not forward. What will happen is like, if you choose the option called as do not forward, what will happen? You will not be, the person whom you're sending the email will not get a button called as forward. That person will not be able to forward that email to the next person. So those kind of restrictions are all available onto something called as the rights management server on the on-premises. So the same ideology is available as a, as an option on the cloud on the cloud it is called as the irm information rights management okay so these jargons are very very important when you are going sitting in an interview if they if they give you this uh, uh, kind of a jargons and codes you should be able to answer it in a better way that is very very important okay so that is the idea and say like it says DLP. I'm sure you would have heard of DLP and many people would have asked you questions on DLP as well. So yes, we will talk about DLP in detail. So these are the features available. And also it's saying like, it is going to safeguard your corporate data by allowing more secure access to company and for the sensitive information and the country wise legal compliance is also met. So let's say like your organization uh, is, is compliant with GDPR. So global data protection regulation. So all those regulations are, are, are achieved and satisfied by 
Microsoft. Okay, that is the idea. So these are the features available. So if you say try for free, it is going to take you to a page wherein like you have to fill in. You have to fill in all your details of your company. So now let's have a small comparison on how things have changed over the years. Just a hint. Okay. So now let's say like, let's take a small scenario saying that I am in 20, 2008. Okay. Let's consider that I'm in the year 2008. So in 2008, if I have to start an organization, what is it I have to do is that first I have to purchase, I have to purchase a domain first and then I have to I need to set up a data center so what is it I have to do first is that I have to purchase a space I mean I don't have to purchase I have to rent out a space and then I have to purchase uh, the hardware say the service networking everything from the respective people let's say like I have to purchase from IBM Dell HP and then I have to purchase uh, the respective software from Microsoft or Cisco or anywhere and then I have to I need to have an administrator who is going to implement everything admin for implementation setting up the data center and then I need an administrator for management okay that's the way how companies it's called as a greenfield implementation right from nowhere you set up a company and let's say like this is the structure for this let's say like approximately it will take around six months say like not not a longer one let's say like three to six months of a implementation timeline okay now how things have changed is that let's say like Hey, today I want to start a company. Okay. What is your company name? Second, how many people you want? Okay. That's it. So within a 30 minutes of time, okay. Within a shorter span of time, you will be able to set up your company and you will be able to have your users to be able to have your company. For example, let's say like my company name is joyatress.com. So what is the speed onto which we are working is that let's say this is your company. You will be able to set up 25 users instantly. And these 25 users will be users will be able to log into a domain. Okay. They'll be able to log into a domain. They will have their emails. Email IDs will be available and they'll be able to collaborate and communicate within each other, communicate successfully. Okay. And they will be having a SharePoint library, SharePoint for document library. Okay. And they will be able to have a storage space of one terabyte they will be able to have MS office online and offline online and offline as well. And they will be able to have teams for their collaboration and come and chatting. I am, I am audio conferencing and video conferencing. All these things are going to set up in a matter of minutes. Say like a 30, say like a 30 to 30 minutes to one hour, you can set up an organization, set up users and get started and moving on. Okay. Why, why this, why this is very important because like, as you might be knowing that during the COVID, what happened? Many, many companies, they had to shut down. So let's say like in this scenario, I'm talking about, okay, let's say in this legacy scenario, you started a company 
May God's grace, if everything is going well, that's a different one. In case if things are not going the way you are ex you are expecting to happen, so if you are if you want to shut this down, if you want to shut this down, all these hard ways things are going to be wasted, right? People will definitely buy it for extremely, uh, you know, smaller price, and it's it's of it's not going to be a great one for you. Whereas, what is the strength of this? Office 365 is that the scalability is extremely high. Let's say like you started a company and your company became a super duper hit. Today you have 25 users. Tomorrow you want to hire another 50 users. In a matter of minutes, 50 licenses you can purchase and 50 users will be ready to onboard. Okay. If things are going the other way around, Due to some unavoidable reasons, you have to shut down your company. Shut it down. You just don't have to pay for the next bunch of license. That's it. Okay, that is that is the way. So the 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 scalability is extremely high over here. You don't you you like it, you scale it up. You don't like it, you scale it down, or you you even you, you can shut it down at a very very minimal amount of loss. I wouldn't say there is no loss. No. Loss will be there, but a very, very minimal loss is what we are talking about. Okay. So that is the strength of the M365. So how quick you can. So that's what this agile methodology is talking about, right? So they say fail fast. You want to try something, try something, fail fast. In case, if, in case like if it's success, move forward. If it is failing, quickly reverse and come back to normal and start something else is what the agile methodology is saying. So same thing is helpful when it comes to this M365. Okay. So, so either, no, it's all, it's all depending upon like your organization size. So if you want to manage for like two users, one user also, you can do it. There's no big deal. There's no minimum license for managing that. It's totally fine. Okay. So this is just a hint I'm talking about. So what is that I generally do is like, I talk more about, you know, kind of an interview scenario. So more of, because like, it's not it, because like portal is what we are going to do it. We are going to learn over here. If you see, if you could see the portal is what we are going to talk about. So portal, anyone, anyone can, you know, anyone can do it. But as an administrator, you should be able to understand why this is happening. Why come? Because like we are from, I don't know how many of you are 90s kids. So we know the transition from no phones to landline, to mobile, to Symbian OS, to Android OS. And then iOS, right? So like that, that transition, we know that. So we know the problems that were on the legacy model. And we know the strength of the current cloud model. And we know the disadvantages also. So, so that is what we are going to cover over here. You should know the legacy on-premises model. What went wrong in that? What are the problems that organizations are facing? Why they are moving to Office 365? You should know that. Okay. So that's the idea altogether over here. So this is this is M365 course, uh, Love Preet Singh. So, whale, whale, Ola. We will talk about that. We, there are different domain verification steps are available. We will talk about the domain verification steps and we will do that also because that is the very, very first step that every organization does it when they are going for the Office 365 setup. We will talk about that. This is just a first uh, class, not a first class also, just a get to know uh, class, right? So, so, we will definitely talk about that, all right? So I'll not take much of your time. I'll just uh, stop right over here. So I'll just uh, leave this to Amit. So Amit is the account manager. So um, so this is Amit's number. So please feel free to contact him, and he will keep you posted. Like when are we like when we are starting the batch, and uh, and uh, say like oh, the timing as I told you. Timing is going to be a weekend timing, Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Sunday, 6.30 p.m. is the standard timing that we do it. And uh, yeah, so the timeline is around, uh, say, like uh, six to eight weekends is what uh, we, will, we, will, we will try to do it. That is the plan. Okay, so Kumar, AD knowledge is not required, but if you have it, it's well and good, but not mandatory to have it. All right. So any questions, please put it onto the chat. Uh, I'm just keeping an eye on it. I'll be happy to answer if there are any questions. If there are no questions, feel free 
to drop and please get in touch with Amit and he will guide you on the next step. So one more thing. So thanks for the reminder, Silva. So as you could see that this session is being recorded, right? So like the same way, every session that we, that we catch up, every session will be recorded and you will be provided with that recording onto the Google drive and you'll be able to access it anytime. And the download is not available. You will not be able to download, but you'll be able to access it lifetime uh, is the, is the idea. So every session will be recorded and you'll be provided with the recorded video in case if you're unable to attend a class due to some reason, you'll be able to go through the recordings and you'll be able to refresh it. So Ankush, we will talk about everything. I'll let you know how to set up your lab on that. So don't worry. I will guide you on that. So Abzal, it is completely a practical one. So I will help you to set up a lab. I'll be, I'll be, I'll help you to set up everything and I will make you to do it onto your lab also. That is the way I generally work. So yes, it is only on weekends, Saturday, Sunday, 6.30 PM IST is the plan. All right, good then. So good to meet you all. I'll catch up in the next session. So please get in touch with Amit and he will guide you with the next steps. Thank you everyone. Bye.